Hello everyone, I'm Shiv and you're watching F1 Error Nemesis. For those of you who are new to my channel, a quick background check. I work with the Red Bull Racing team for the 2021 and the 2022 season as a student placement aerodynamicist. And this has given me some insights into the world of F1 aerodynamics. And my objective with this aero analysis series is to give you those insights. So let's dive into it then. Well, the RB19 is finally out and in this video, we're going to look at some of the RB19 details and compare them with Ferrari and also try and understand some of the potential aero mechanisms at play. So we're going to look at the leading edge height of the floor. We're going to look at the floor edge itself and then the extreme undercut that's there on the Red Bull and how that might potentially interact with the vortex that is shed from the floor edge. This comes with the standard disclaimer that aerodynamics is complex and we fully cannot predict what's happening but we can speculate and speculate we shall and in this video let's try and understand and speculate some of the potential aero mechanisms at play. So let's get into it. So one simple way of looking at the floor edge height and how it controls the loading uh, across the floor is to think of it like a wing. Like the higher the floor edge is, the lower will be the loading. The more inboard part it is, the more normally efficient it is, just like the wing. So let us first look at the floor leading edge height and how it impacts the floor loading in general and how you can use that floor loading to drive outwash um, just from the loading itself. So if you look at the flow leading edge of the Ferrari, you see that initially it's down, it rises and then it aggressively falls up and then you know, ends where the outer fence is. So just to show you all what that loading might look like is initially the loading would be higher, it would come down and then it would rise and then it would fall down again. Now this is really interesting because this differential loading that is from here to here would land up drawing an outwash characteristic. So your macro flow field would naturally want to outwash because there is more loading on the outboard side, uh, which is similar to how we spoke about the front wings. Um, and then you might say, okay, the flow wants to do that here, right? It might, but most of this differential loading over here, what it's doing is it's controlling the strength of the vortex that is coming from each fence. So you can imagine fence one would sit, would sit somewhere around here. And you know, this delta in pressure would drive the strength of that vortex. And then similarly, fence two would sit around here and then that delta would drive the strength of that vortex. So there are two factors at play here. One is the amount of macro outwash you want uh, in terms of the global flow field from the floor loading itself. And then the way you tune the flow leading edge itself has a lot to do with how the vortex strength of each of the fence is. Of course, the fence curvature also plays a big role into it, but the flow loading in general also determines what is the initial strength of that vortex because of the pressure gradient across the fence. And you have to find the balance between the two to kind of come out with your optimum solution. If you look at what's happening in the Red Bull, you pretty much have a flat leading edge and then it drops down. So what this would look like in terms of loading is you would have initially a high loading, which would gradually decrease as you go towards uh, the outboard side. It decreases because of the drop in efficiency, normally because of the strength of the structures. And then you would have this kick and then the drop down. So you see that Red Bull has gone with this philosophy of having an aggressive kick from here to here. So it's basically the outermost channel that driving most, most of the outwash over here in terms of macro flow field. And then this section here, um, I think what they've tried to do is they, they've tried to keep like the flow leading edge height to be constant because they want like a predictable initial vortex strength, which they then manipulate with the shape of the fence itself, because both of these factors play a role in how the vortex comes out of the fence. So um, again, two factors here. One is the loading drives the macro outwash and the loading also drives what is the initial strength of the vortex. Uh, that you get from each fence. So let us now have a look at the famous floor extraction that everybody talks about and what is the aerodynamics behind it and why are we trying to create outwash and extract flow from underneath the floor. 
So if you see the front floor of the Ferrari from underneath, what you can see are veins that are driving the flow out. I mean, why you have this aggressive kick is in itself uh, another uh, question. But what they're fundamentally doing is they are creating outwash and they are expanding the flow. Now, why would you want to do that? Why do you want to create this outwash, right? The first reason is because this outwash protects the flow from inwash. What do I mean by this? It kind of creates a ceiling effect that, you know, the skirts used to do way early on. So what, what do I mean by this? What I mean to say is like, if you think about it very crudely, you have higher pressure on top of the floor and you have low pressure underneath the floor because of all the suction that goes on. And there's a natural tendency for air to inwash. And if that happens, then that would land up reducing the expansion and taking all the dirty air from the top underneath the floor. And then that can kind of reduce your performance from the floor itself. The second thing it does is, as I said, because you land up expanding the flow like a diffuser, it lands up dropping the pressure at the front that is at near the leading edge of the floor itself. So you land up dropping the pressure, like how you drop pressure uh, in the throat of a diffuser by expanding the flow more. And then because you're expanding the floor and you land up dropping the pressure on the front half of the floor, you land up driving more mass flow rate through the entire floor, which again is very, very useful in terms of generating more downforce on the entire floor. And then this also has effects in terms of how the quality of the vortex that is shed from each of this uh, vein. Uh, let us try and understand how do they maximize this outwash. So if you look at uh, the 2022 floor design, what you can see, let's use this one, is they've used kind of some form of gurneys on top of here, right? So what are they actually trying to do here? So if you think about it, uh, if you just think about an aerofoil, right, with a gurney, what lands up happening is when you put a gurney here, you land up dropping the trailing edge condition, uh, that is the flow does not have to expand to um, free stream pressure because of the vortex structures that, that, that gets produced. And what you land up doing is you land up creating more upwash. So in a way, uh, you land up expanding the flow a little bit more, you land up creating upwash. And what that does is it decreases the static pressure even more. So gurneys are a nice way of expanding the floor or pushing uh, the flow a bit harder, which lands up giving you a drop in uh, static pressure at the leading edge. And that is exactly what these gurneys are doing. They are helping the flow, they are upwashing the flow, and they are creating a drop in static pressure at the leading edge or at the front half of the uh, floor itself. Now, problem is when you land up doing this, you land up creating losses. So that's why you see there are like Two designs which were quite famous one was a gurney itself so you land up doing not that but you land up doing that while you have your vortex structures here or people had a curled design and some people were going a bit more aggressive with their curls than others right and so the idea is the same that you land up up washing the flow uh, which can give you a bit more expansion now what red bull have here in their design is super interesting because both of these designs, um, one and two, are susceptible to some form of separation depending on different attitudes of the car, different ride heights of the car can change this quite dramatically. And these losses, um, let me just quickly change the color. These losses will land up feeding into the floor, which again is not beneficial for producing more load from the floor, right? What Red Bull have landed up doing is very interesting. They have landed up slotting um, this floor edge by using the floor edge wing. So what you have here is to get like an equivalent effect, they have a small upwashing on the floor edge itself. And then they have a slot. And what that does is it lands up giving you an upwash. You can pretty much expect attached flow here. And then because you have a re-energization from the uh, air that's coming through the slot, you land up having a cascade effect. So you can land up getting more upwash. So increased upwash, increased expansion, right? And most importantly, um, you can expect both of this for an increased 
range of um, attitudes, you know, as the car is going through different ride heights, different uh, roll angles, uh, different yaw angles, this mechanism would be, let's say, more consistent. Also, what Red Bull have been able to achieve is something really smart. If you look at the supports and if you look at how they run across the entire length of the floor, uh, you see that these supports run all the way the length of the floor. So the one floor edge winglet or the one floor edge wing, which you're allowed to uh, use according to the regulations, Red Bull have been able to maximize the entire length of it. Um, that is by using it across the length of the entire floor. Um, now this can be a result of the new regulations which make the floor edge go 15 millimeters higher. So Red Bull has chosen this more aggressive design because of that uh, increase in height. So not only do you get outwash with the slotting effect, you also land up dropping the pressure. Remember, because you land up creating like a cascade effect, you land up dropping the pressure across the length of the entire floor edge. And by having this floor edge wing across the entire length of the floor edge, you've been able to maximize the span or increase the platform across which this happens. And this will give you additional downforce throughout the length of the floor edge itself. Another interesting effect that this floor edge wing allows you to do is to have almost like two discrete vortex, one from the outer edge. Oops, that went wrong. One from the outer edge and one from the inner edge. So this can have a couple of uses. Like one is it allows you to control the strength of the vortex because now you've divided that strength into two. And also um, it might allow you to position these two vortices slightly differently, although they would, chances are they are quite close and they would land up merging. But, you know, they can use it for different purposes by driving the vortex in different ways. So again, that's a bit of speculation and I wouldn't know how that works exactly. Another interesting speculation is how this floor edge vortex can combine to give you uh, a design which allows you to have a large undercut. Um, so just for flow visualization, you can see how this would look like. Um, the Merck uh, test kind of revealed this really lovely picture, which I absolutely love. But what this would do is imagine this vortex here, right? This would create inwash and downwash onto the flow that's coming on this half of the car. And what that would do is that would allow you to keep this flow attached across an aggressive uh, undercut. The second thing it would allow you to do is decrease boundary layer losses. So the losses um, of the flow going through the undercut would not be high because this flow lands up feeding into the rear half of the car, whether it's the rear tire squirt or it's going over the beam wing and helping the diffuser to expand a bit more. So I think having a strong and consistent flow rate vortex uh, allows Red Bull to have this aggressive undercut, which then lands up uh, giving you high energy, high velocity air to the rear end of the car, which the rear end of the car can then use for flow expansion or tire squirt management. I hope this video has given you an insight into how flow ridges work and some of the speculative aero mechanisms that are being used to increase extraction so as to increase uh, and maximize the performance or the downforce created by the flow themselves. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe and let me know potential speculative aero mechanisms that you might think that are going on in the comments below. Looking forward to your comments. Have a good one. You're watching F1 Aerodynamicist.